All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, what are we doing today? Today we're doing a little bit of tackle organization. I'm gonna take this jumbled, swelled up mess of a box and I'm gonna transfer it into a new box that I'm gonna keep all my crankbaits in. And then we've gotta do some cleaning inside of my little pathetic lipless box here. I gotta give them some more liplesses. Um, I had a tough year last year with liplesses and lost a whole, whole bunch, but some rust has started to set up in this box. Even though these are those Z rust boxes, the rust can still get in them. And once it sets up in there, it is hard to keep it out. So we're gonna clean some of those off, replace some hooks, which I got here, and just have ourselves a good time. It's a, it's a great time to do this because for you guys that are new to the channel that don't know me, my name is Alex Rudd, and I wanna thank you for taking time to your busy day, your busy week to come hang out with me and to watch this video. But I broke my leg a few weeks ago, and so usually I'm out on the water, and like today I would be fishing. It's a gorgeous day, a great day to be out on the lake catching fish. But since the old leg is broke, I'm not weight bearing and can't go fishing so i've been spending a lot of time doing some unboxings getting some tackle organized just doing some stuff i need to do to get ready so that when it is time to go fishing i'll be ready and for a lot of you guys that live up north right now you're iced in and so you got to sit around get your tackle organized and get ready for next year and so i thought you know what why not set up the camera talk to the camera and have a good time showing you guys how i organize my stuff but yeah that's what we're doing today, and without further ado, let's get into this and start organizing some crankbaits. Here's what we've got. We've got this entire box that we've got to reorganize, and then we've got some new stuff here from Tackle Warehouse that I picked up just, uh, well, it's been a while ago. I got it on the Black Friday sale, but I unboxed it just a couple days ago on my channel. So we've got to put all the new stuff in this box as well as get this old stuff out of the box and just kind of get it organized, and I thought I would work through it with you guys and show you how I like to organize stuff. So, box that I'm using right now is a 5007, a 5000 size Flambo Z Rust box. And it has done me well, but as you guys can see, it's a little full. Um, this is <laughs> actually not all of my small body medium diving crankbaits and square bills. This is just part of them, but this is kind of what I keep in the boat with me all the time just in case I need it because I love freaking cranking. So we're gonna transfer all this, organize it back because I had it organized where I had like square bills and certain colors together and it all just kind of blew to pieces. But we're gonna organize it back into the colors it needs to be organized into and, and see what we can get done. There's also gonna be some pretty cool stuff in here. Some stuff some of you guys may have never seen before. Um, some stuff that I might have forgot that I had, which I can go ahead and tell you this right here, right off the top. This is actually a really cool little crank there right here. If I can get it loose from this 3XD. This is a Rebel. This is a beat cranker. And this is an awesome little crankbait. And I don't know if you can hear it, but that sound that it makes is super unique. And this is a crankbait that I've caught a lot of fish on, and specifically in that color. Um, you can't hardly find them anymore. But that one little BB is just completely free floating inside of that crankbait and it makes a really unique, like, high-pitched sound, and it's just a uh, really cool crankbait, so that's that, but there's a lot more in here than just that. So let's start organizing here. So I am switching over to a Spro box. It's actually a box that got suggested to me while I was doing my Black Friday shopping live stream, and this is the 3700 deep size Spro box, and I thought this would be plenty big enough for what I'm wanting to do with it, and I'll be able to, uh, Put all kinds of stuff in it so for you guys that have never organized a tackle box before usually they don't come with the dividers in them the dividers will come like this right here and what you gotta do is you gotta take a pair of scissors and essentially just clip out the little dividers and what i'm thinking is i'm probably going to divide this maybe in three spots so i'll have three up here three in the middle three all the way down that way i can get really specific with my organization i think that's going to be the way i want to do it um, just so i can have you know, places for shag color square bills and places for cross color, color square bills and all that kind of stuff. Because I do keep my small body crankbaits and my square bills in the same box just because really, truthfully, if I'm small body cranking for the most part, I'm going to be cranking a square bill at the same time. I usually keep both tied on when it is that time of year. So, yeah, let's figure out how the old boxes work. <laughs> So, 
I mean, I'm all about having a good tight fit on things, but Lord have mercy. I didn't know I had to be so surgically close, close on my cuts on these small tabs to get them to fit. I mean, my gosh, but here we go. Here we've got the last one going in and bingo jack, that's what I wanted to look like. That actually looks, looks good. So I've got enough slots here that I should be able to organize everything that I want to and have plenty of room. Now I say that, but I got a, I got a lot of crankbaits here. So let's start taking a look at the box and kind of how I'm going to organize it. So in this box, I've got square bills um, and crawl patterns, shad patterns, chartreuses, and then some like weird in-betweens like this green crawl rachia. I've also got things like medium diving small body crankbaits like 3XDs, bandits, uh, that rebel that I showed you and a few others, spro rock crawlers, those kinds of things. I've got some flat sides, some KVD Strike King flat sides and a few other flat sides. And then I've got some like weird one-off stuff. Um, I say one-off, but these are really good crankbaits. Some mega bass stuff that is kind of a weird in between where it's a bigger body crankbait, but it's still on that small body diving range stuff like this duo and that kind of thing so what i really like to do and when i'm organizing my boxes what i like to do is i like to organize by diving depth and color and so in style of crankbait obviously and so what i'm thinking is i'll do 3xds and crawl patterns 3xds and shad patterns square bills and crawl patterns square bills and shad patterns so on and so forth and kind of just build the box like that but first what we got to do here is get this stuff opened up that is not opened up yet so got a duo here this is an apex 66 this is their new square bill really good looking square bill crankbait from them i'm really digging that offering um i got this new thing so here's a weird kind of one-off bait the jabber jaw right? i don't know if you guys have seen this thing yet again another interesting bait what this is is a square bill with a metal bill and so it's meant to make the hunting action like a square build but the sound of a bladed jig i got me one of these new bill lewis sb 57s this is a square bill square bill but with like a, a small body diving crankbait body which i think is really good got one of the new tactical dds another bait that i'm excited to try because everybody's been talking so highly of it and uh i know if the boys over at tactical bass are promoting it it is probably a really good crankbait now this is kind of one of those weird crankbaits kind of like this mega bass it falls in that weird range it dives a little bit deeper it's a little bit heavier but you could still consider it a small body medium diving crankbait got me a rock star which i'm a huge fan of the spro rock crawler and so i'm sure the rock star is very similar it's just the paint schemes that these things are coming in is very unique so i've got one of those bad boys to put in this box and then I got me a couple of Fritz sides, which I have yet to try. And I'm super excited to uh, to try out because that's another bait that a lot of people have been catching a lot of fish on. And honestly, I just neglected to pick them up because I'm kind of a creature of habit when it comes to fishing stuff. Um, when I find something that works, I oftentimes just don't jack with it. Now, looking at this box, uh, I'm sure you would, would say otherwise. You know, there's a lot of different baits in this box, but there's really a lot of consistencies. Um, a lot of the same shapes and styles of baits, just a few different brands. And so I thought I would branch out a little bit this year and try some baits like the old Fritz side, which is essentially just a new school take on a very old school lure. There's a lot of guys around here in East Tennessee that make small body, flat sided, shallow diving crankbaits like the Fritz side out of wood and it's kind of where Ott Defoe got his idea to do his new little bait that he's come out with, that, that signature series, the OG. I mean, essentially what that is, is, you know, him tinkering in the garage as well as guys who he fished around here in East Tennessee tinkering in the garage and building different, you know, wood flat sided crankbaits. And that's kind of like a culture here in East Tennessee. Um, you got to talk to a lot of guys about crankbait culture and there's a lot of it here in East Tennessee that revolves around hand making your own balsa wood and other types of wood baits that literally fit that little profile right there. You know, a lot small body crankbaits that get bit. So cool stuff. Those are really cool. I'm excited about them. But I'm excited about everything that I've got here today. So let's, uh, 
let's start organizing here. So let's just grab what's on top here. We're gonna start with the Spro Rock Crawlers. So I'm gonna, I have a lot of rock crawlers, most of them, I say a lot, I actually need to resupply on a few of my rock crawlers. I know I got one tied on out of the boat, but the uh, crawl patterns, we're gonna put all those together. And for the most part, almost all of my rock crawlers are in some kind of crawl pattern. So we're just gonna put all of those together so that I have them. And now that I'm pulling all these out of here, I'm realizing that I don't have as many rock crawlers as I thought I did, and it kind of makes me sad because I did lose a lot of those last year too. Last year was a rough year on rock crawlers and liplesses. So that is actually a smaller, that's the 55, I think. It dives just a little bit shallower, but that's okay. We'll put it in there. A little PB&J, that was a color that got quite a few bites last year. That purple belly did a lot of work. So there's my rock crawlers. All of those are going to be by crawl. And so going down that same train of thought, I'm going to just grab my three XDs and start putting them in there. And this is uh, this is what happens. A lot of people like to use those treble hook guards, which I'm sure are a fantastic idea, but you give that bad boy a few shakes and it's going to shake out of there just like that. So grab all my three XDs here. This is a really awesome color. And what's crazy about these three XDs is you can probably see the difference between that one and that one same exact bait same exact color but you can see the drastic difference in the actual color of the bait and what i found is they'll eat one or the other better at different times of the year and you can see this one's got a lot more hook rash on it because that lighter more school bus yellow like faded yellow gets more bites than that brighter yellow now that could all be in my head and i'm sure it probably is but i'm telling you me and my dad have uh have gotten some arguments about who gets to throw the more school bus yellow 3XDs when we're <laughs> when we're out on the water trying to uh, trying to catch some fish. So I should have a few more 3XDs in here, and I'm sure we'll stumble across them as we go and pick them out some more. All right, here's another rock crawler that we miss. So we'll get that one out of here. Let's stick that one. That is my favorite rock crawler of all time, Mud Bug. Amazing, amazing crankbait and. Yeah, maybe I'm hurting on 3XDs. I don't know what I'm hurting on here. It's kind of, this is a good way to figure out what you need too, right? Need. It's always a need with fishing stuff. Ain't that right, babe? It's a need. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we always say. All right, so you got a few 3XDs there. Definitely need to restock on those. I believe I got some out there on the peg, so that's all good. And now, you know what? Let's go, since we're going down that same train of thought, let's go ahead and start pulling out some wiggle warts. We'll put all those in one one side i love the wiggle wart this right here is probably my favorite color of all time you're gonna see consistencies in my box crawl patterns i love crawl patterns it's what gets bit around me it's what i like to throw and so i've got a lot a lot of them and so here is a wiggle wart that actually needs some hooks put on we can throw some hooks on that thing here in a little while because i did bring the hooks in so i got some hooks I want to talk to you guys about them um, and we'll talk about them here in a minute but here they are i order all my hooks from um this place what's it called i just drew a blank lure parts online and i order my travel hooks in bulk because it's cheaper to do it that way and so lure parts online is actually a really really cool good resource you should check them out so here's kind of a weird i'll stick this with my crawl patterns even though it's not truly a crawl pattern that's kind of a weird one-off color this is something that gets bit um, river fishing. You know what, let's set this on the side here. We'll come back to that. But that gets bit river fishing. There's something about those purples. Again, it's kind of like that rock crawler had that little bit of purple in it. It's just a, something a little bit different that gets bit. So here's a 3XD. Here's another crawl pattern 3XD we can throw right down in there. And do I have any more wiggle warts? I'm sure here's a one offer right here. Another weird color that gets bit though. This one right here, all pink. I don't know if you've ever seen one like that, but it's just a weird color that gets bit. All right, so Spro Rock Crawlers, 3XDs, Wiggle Warts, and Bobby in the background there. Now let's start moving on to Bandits. So I've got quite a few Bandits in here, both 300s and 200s. So we'll probably just put them in the same side. Well, this is where we get into some stuff that you may have never seen before. Some of these colors, they literally don't make anymore. Um, this is one that's kind of hard to find, specifically in that 
not that color. They still make the color, but they don't make that like shade of that color. And it's another one of those things, kind of like that 3XD. It's just a shade. The way the paint is, I don't know if it's they changed the brand or what it is, but it gets bit. But there's some colors in here that they literally don't make anymore. Like this one right here. This is uh, one of the last ones I've got. I've got some in a box that I don't throw because they don't make them anymore. It was called, uh, I want to say Soft Shell Crawl. And this literally is the single best Bandit color that they ever made. And uh, they only made it in the Bandit 200. They made it for a while in the 300. But that bad boy right there. I, I literally, that's the only one that I keep in this box. And if I ever lose it, I'll probably go in after that bad boy because of just how valuable that bait actually is to me. So, so I got some chartreuse bandits here. I'm trying to kind of dig around in here. Some chartreuse and black. Here's a cool one. This is another one. This one I actually found with my wife while we were doing a little lure hunt. So every year I'll go out and I'll walk the banks of the lakes around my house because what they do is we have a winter drawdown. And during that winter drawdown, you can walk around and you can find a bunch of baits just like that. And I actually found that one laying in the mud. So I brought it home, cleaned it up, threw some new hooks on it, and it was ready to rock and roll. But just a, it's a good looking little color there. I like the gold. The gold flake really makes it. So yeah, I need to bump up on the bandits a little bit. That's what I'm, I'm hurting on bandits too. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably watching this saying, Alex, you're not really hurting on anything, but trust me. When you get on a good cranking bite, you're going to lose some crankbaits. And you want to have as many of that crankbait as you can possibly have so that uh, you can go out and you can go catch them. So it's another good little color. I believe they still like that one. So there we go. Got all the crawl patterns on one side. Now let's start putting some stuff in here that kind of is on the shad pattern and maybe some of our oddball colors. So here's an oddball color in a 3XD. Um, an all black. This is something they come out with a few years ago and I got on a pretty good bite with it in some muddy water one day and My buddy Ben has been on a good bite with it too up and up north But just a very unique pattern Overall that I really really like but so we'll start putting those in here. We'll put all the chartreuse and black together in the three XDs and then all the black blacks Just so that all that is together. So just three XD chartreuse and black Great springtime color when the uh, water comes back up. So inevitably, right, you're gonna have a winter draw down. You're gonna have a winter draw back up too. And that's really where, like in the spring is where I start to break out the chartreuses just because of how dirty the water actually gets. And chartreuses and darker base colors seem to do better when that happens. And so that's when I break out like the perches and the chartreuse blackbacks. And I have a ton of success with them is when they start to draw that water back up so we're going to put all those together i believe i got enough chartreuse black 3xds to to float the boat with so i love this deeper um this deeper tackle box i'm able to get more stuff in there which is always good you always want to have more stuff with you all right so it doesn't look like now we got some bandits so we'll put all the chartreuse black bandits in one spot now here's a good one I don't know if you guys have ever seen this bait, and if you've not watched this video, it's a video that is actually pretty old at this point, probably three or four years old. But this is the Eat Me Bandit. And one day we were fishing, and this was early, early spring. And I say early, early spring because it was February, but it was one of those weird Februarys where it's like 70 freaking degrees outside. And they were still eating a crankbait, but they were eating an all chartreuse crankbait. And I sat down and I wrote, eat me on one side or the other and when i did that i stood right up and i caught a four pounder and so i'll link that video down below and up above right now so you can check it out but that is the eat me bandit an all chartreuse this isn't another one of those weird ones that you probably won't find anymore but an all chartreuse bandit with eat me on either side and caught some fish on that thing so that was a good time that was a good day a good memory you know when you when you draw eat me on a on a crankbait and they eat it. That's a good memory. Here's another awesome color. This one I believe is called Peacock. This is an awesome river fishing color. When that water gets muddy, they start discharging out of those dams. They will eat that Peacock color like they won't eat anything else. And I think it just does a good job of mimicking bluegill because I can't tell you how many bluegill that I've caught or how many big smallmouth that I've caught with bluegills in the back of their throat throwing that color right there. So. 
on this one to go in the chartreuse and black there. All right, so that's all of those, um, except for these wiggle warts. We'll stick those together, those kind of oddball wiggle warts. And then this little rebel, I'm just gonna stick it in with those wiggle warts because it's just kind of a, one of those oddball baits. And so that is what we've got so far. And now I'm kind of worried because I think we're gonna start running out of room really, really quick when we start doing square bills. But, but boys and girls, I think we can make it work because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all the flat sides in with the 3XD shad color. So this is an awesome bait if you've never tried it out. It's a KVD 1.5 flat. And this is a bait that I discovered probably four or five years ago, but it's been out for freaking ever. And like nobody threw it, which was crazy. And like, I didn't know anybody was throwing it. And I picked some up and just didn't throw them for the longest time. And we were fishing one day and wouldn't get bit on anything else. The water was incredibly clear. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try this freaking flat side and see what I can get done with it. And lo and behold, if I didn't just start freaking slaying fish with it. And so ever since then, it has been a bait that I keep in the box and it is a bait that straight up gets bit around me. Um, especially when we get late, late in the winter, when the water clears up a lot, they will eat this thing better than they will eat a lot of other baits, which is really, really cool. So. Gonna we'll stick all the shad color 3XDs and the flat side in one little compartment here. We may have to stick it in this compartment because that compartment just isn't deep enough. So we'll stick all of these right in here together. And now they have a home as well. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm a little OCD when it comes to my tackle. I like it to be organized by color and everything. And so I'm a little, I'm a little weird about things like that. I don't know if you guys can tell. So, um, let's do this while we're here. I've got some new crankbaits that we can start to kind of put together. And so what I'm gonna do is, here is one of my weirder kind of one-off mega bass. It's one of those LBOs. We're gonna stick it here with my other LBO, whatever. Where did I end up putting that bait just now? There's the other LBO. Even though it's two different colors, I got a chartreuse and a crawl. We'll stick those together because they are kind of one-off baits and we may, just go ahead and stick that tactical bass and crank in there with it so that they're all together just like that. This kind of that weird mid-range diving doesn't know really where it falls. And then let's go ahead and start sticking some square bills. So I love square bill crankbait fishing. You guys know that. Um, you guys are probably going to get sick of all the square bills that are actually going to go on this box. But it is just part of my life, right? I love square bill crankbait fishing. It's something I like to do. And so I've got a lot of these mugs. And so what we're gonna do here, let's describe this duo too. And we can kind of stick it in the one-off box right there. So a little one-off side there. Mega Bass is some Japanese crankbaits that I don't throw a whole lot, but when I do, I need them. So there's that. And then we're just gonna go 1.5s. Rayburn Reds. Chili Crawl 1.5s, all of those can go into one compartment here together because those are very, very important to me. You guys know if you've been around the channel for any amount of time that I uh, I, I love a Rayburn Red 1.5. I'm going to stick this Jabber Jaw in here. I'm going to stick that bad boy in there. That bad boy. Those are all good together. And then we have got some more crawl pattern 1.5s here. This one is called Brown Crawl, one of my favorite colors. You get that brown side with that peekaboo orange belly. That can go right in there as well. Another one that can go right in there. Here's another bait that I actually found while I was out with Bethany. I put any hooks on it or anything yet. This is a, I want to say this is a We Are. This is a fat wrap is what that is. It's a pile of fat wrap. I found that one while we were out looking around for baits one day when the water was down too. So, and then that bad boy. Hmm. You know what? We're going to stick it with our oddball baits there. Those odd colors. So that's good together. And now all of our kind of shad-ish color 1.5s. I may even throw some perch color 1.5s in there with them. Those kinds of things right there. That color right there, if you've never thrown it, is very unique. It does a really good job of mimicking a little bit of everything. 
and it straight gets bit. So highly, highly suggest having some of those. Here's another one. This is a six cents, kind of a weird crawl shad ish pattern. Here is another great bait, the six cents curve. We'll stick that with our oddballs. That's uh that's it. That's how I organize a crankbait box. You guys can see here. I got it organized kind of how I want it. I got my rock crawlers, 3XDs. I got my wiggle warts, bandits, 3XD chartreuses, bandit chartreuses, oddball stuff that doesn't fit within a category, Japanese mega bass stuff, square bills, like random square bills that are some of the new ones, some of the fritz sides, some 1.5 KVDs, 1.5 KVD chartreuse, and then all of my flat sides and my shag color 3xds well that right there is one very well organized and beautiful small body crankbait box if i've ever seen one myself i've got everything exactly how i want it now and uh, i love it i'm very ocd about my fishing equipment i like it to be in a certain order certain colors certain shapes certain brands i want it all to be nice and organized and that is what I've got now, especially in this nice box, which I'm very, very impressed with. So now that we've got that done, we gotta work on some liplessness. So a lot of what I'm dealing with here is just surface rust. It's not like deep, deep, you know, marred in rust. You guys can see there, a little bit of rust just up in the corners of the boxes. And essentially what that is from is from a couple of these crankbaits that got put in there wet or got put in there with some clay on them. So I fish around a lot of clay mud in the winter time and you guys can probably see it on there that clay mud will rust stuff faster than anything just because it holds onto that moisture so a couple of these older more beat up crankbaits have got some rust on them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the hooks off the split rings just get rid of the hooks because they need to be replaced anyway and then clean these things up really really good and i know it sounds pretty counterintuitive but a little bit of dawn and a rag will get a lot of this rust off and then if you just let them sit out and dry you won't have to worry about the rust anymore and then too the z rust tab should keep the rust out of there and they've done a really good job of it but what i'll also do is throw a couple little silica packs in there if you guys don't know what those are it's like what comes in a new pair of shoes or a certain piece of clothing or certain items you'll get those silica packs and they just wick moisture off of things and so yeah i'll throw those down in the box just to make sure that there's a little bit of extra protection down in here but i'm gonna get to work here and start taking some hooks off some baits and start putting some new hooks on and hooks like i said i get all of my treble hooks in bulk from lure packs lure packs lure parts online and they come in these little packs like this right here it's a 10 pack and i actually picked these up these are barbarian hooks by vmc now i'm not a huge fan of vmc but from everything i've heard about the barbarian hooks they are extremely extremely tough and they actually use them for steelhead fishing and you know steelhead fishing is some like rough fishing those are very strong fish they'll bend out hooks and so i got these on sale black friday a dollar 49 for a 10 pack and so i was able to get a whole lot of hooks really really cheap and so i picked those up to try them out and that's what i'm going to be replacing these hooks with and then we also have a babaroo here Everybody say hi, Bobby, with his uh, Christmas pajamas on. Yes, those are dinosaurs with Christmas trees on their back. So, Bobby, you want to help Dad uh, switch out some treble hooks, bud? Okay, yeah, that's a real good response there, man. Let me go back. this box back together again all I did was a rag with a little bit of water a little bit of Dawn in it wiped everything out real good wiped off the baits with it honestly it goes a long long way I thought I had some silica packs laying around here I did I don't know where they went but I'll get some you can buy them off Amazon for like I think you get like a thousand of them for like twenty dollars or something like that but let's put the box back together so I don't got a ton of liplessness um, I'm not I mean I throw them, especially in the winter and in the spring, but I just don't keep a lot on hand, which I probably need to change that. But I got some shad, 
I got some chartreuse because everybody needs a chartreuse lipless. This one right here is a color that my good buddy Mr. Caleb Bell calls ugly. Um, but it straight freaking gets munched. So we got some of those. I got some crawl and chartreuse, which are very interesting. And I've got some chrome patterns. I've got just, you know, all the stuff that you need. I got my favorite pattern of all time, the old Raven Red. You guys can see I've thrown that one quite a bit. These, what's funny is the, the chrome ones, the paint starts peeling off of them a lot faster than it does these. I don't know if it's just the way that they actually apply the paint or what it is, but the crawl color ones will stay together a lot more. I got some two taps. I got some normal and there you go. Very simply, that is my lipless paint bait box. It is something that I enjoy. I also got this, which I need to throw in there. It's a six cents bait. It's got that L bill on there. It is, um, it's made for throwing really, really shallow in the grass. So I actually just keep it in there just cause throw it a lot of the same places. Organize my square bills and my small weight down crankbaits. I got my liplesses cleaned up and reorganized. And we're gonna call that one done right there. That is organization is what that is. Everything else is pretty organized in my boat. I try to keep it pretty organized throughout the year. What I like to do is when we get to the end of a season, I'll sit down and just organize everything together and put it away um, in the boat. I keep most of everything in the boat. I mean, I keep my frogs in the boat with me in the winter and stuff like that because it's just a good place to keep it, right? It's not going to get lost or anything like that. But since we are going into a season where I'm going to be throwing a lot of this stuff and I've got some downtime, I thought, you know what? Why not go ahead and fix this while I've got it here and get everything done and over with so that when the leg is healed, we can get back out there on the water. But as always, guys, thank you for watching. Questions or comments, you know where to go leave them. Also, go down in the description. I'll have links for the hooks, the baits, all the boxes I used, everything like that. You guys can go check it out. Also, if you do not follow me on all of my other social medias, go do that. Um, I often don't say that to people, but I don't think people realize I've got an Instagram and a TikTok and all that kind of stuff. So you can go follow me there for content that you won't see here. And as always, you guys are sweet. And Bobby, come here, dude. Bobby says... Uh, Thanks for watching.